The America that Columbus discovered developed and grew through generations of hope and struggle to the life we know today. It's important for us to learn how we have changed so rapidly, to live, work, and play this way. We as a culture have managed to survive rapid change. Other cultures have also changed at different rates and in different ways. Why the differences? The Southwest became home to the Navajo shortly before Columbus opened the doors of the North American continent to colonization from Western Europe. Though Navajo life has also changed markedly, there are considerable differences in the rate and direction of change. To discover these cultural differences and to understand them is our goal. The Navajo came from the Arctic, hunters, gatherers. They adopted some new ways of life. From the Pueblo, large parts of their religion. From the Spaniard, sheep grazing. The Navajo language is closely related to the Apache. Navajo life, more so than ours, continues to concern itself with the necessities of survival. Food, clothing, warmth, shelter. But other factors of environment and tradition make the Navajo pursue these basic necessities of life differently than we. By far, the most important element of social organization is the family. But by family, they mean the entire kin group or clan, particularly on the maternal side. This extended family is not just a formal arrangement for childbearing and raising, but is the fundamental unit on which all other social units are based. All members of the kin group are responsible for the conduct of any one member. If a person misbehaves, people will say, he acts as if he had no relatives. Their dwelling place in the summer is the summer shed on a slight elevation where there is always a breeze. In winter, the family resides in several hogans or earth lodges, usually found a few miles from the shed in a sunny place. From birth, Navajo children are trained in the ways of their people. The baby is bound on a cradle board. At first, he may complain against the restrictive bindings. But in this harsh desert environment, patience is a virtue. He will learn patience. The board does hold him safely. Though it is at first restrictive, he will eventually grow to regard the board as a security symbol and cry to be placed upon it. A typical camp of several Hogans consists of maternal grandmother and grandfather, their sons and daughters, daughters' husbands, and their children. If qualities such as loyalty, love, truth-telling, wisdom are worthy of development, then the family-centered Navajo life should be studied further, for these qualities are widespread among the Navajo.
Today, weaving is an important occupation of the women. The designs are intricate and fascinating, but not Navajo. Like the Hopi Indian, the early Navajo blankets contained only stripes. This blanket is being made to trade for coffee, flour, lard, canned goods, and so on. The Navajo prepares the wool from his sheep, dyes it, cards it. The colors are either aniline dyes purchased from the trading post, or vegetable dyes prepared by the Navajo women from various plants. Again, the relatives work together, the daughter learning from the mother by example and by experience. Working together, sharing basic experiences, adds to the strength of kinship ties. Sheep are grazed by the Navajo on land largely unchanged in centuries. A Navajo family used to graze as many sheep as they wished. But on a land where at least 25 acres are required to sustain each animal, large herds are uncommon. But look at this desert once again. Can you imagine that other people, born of other cultures, might try to change this land? The Navajo family will slaughter a sheep about once a week. Cattle are usually slaughtered in winter when large amounts of fresh meat can be kept. The rains in late summer come almost daily. They are short showers, but always welcome. Water is scarce. Look at the land. Imagine what water means to this society. All life depends on the supply. The Navajo his flocks, the wild animals that live in the valley. The water can be trapped in a natural pool or in artificial pools built by the Navajo. And many small dams have been designed and built by the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Every culture has its ceremonies and rituals. Some relate to food production, some to defense, some to health. One small Navajo ceremonial related to the preservation of health is the sweat bath. Water is rare and cannot always be spared for cleanliness, but nature can be put to work within us. Large stones are heated and placed in a small enclosure. To preserve the heat within the house, a blanket is placed over the only opening. The ceremonial drink is made from herbs, chosen to assure an excess of perspiration. The men drink generously. Before they enter, they will announce four times, you all come in. This is to alert the holy people that a ceremony is being performed. They will remain within the hut for about 20 minutes, chanting ancient songs, absorbing the heat. They may repeat this two or three times. Although forced to live with sand and dirt throughout their lives, the traditional Navajo is deeply conscious of his unique concept of cleanliness and takes great care to maintain it to the extent of using sand as an abrasive to ensure cleanliness. An important aspect of any culture is its art forms, its method of communicating what it considers universal truths. 
For the Navajo, sand painting offers this challenge. The act of sand painting is not in itself a ceremonial, but it is associated with certain Navajo ceremonies, all of religious significance. Sand is selected from all corners of the Navajo country. Usually done at night, this camera record is extraordinary. Painters allow few outside the tribe to see the ceremony. Many Navajo men, as well as the chanters, are painters with sand. They must be trained and highly skillful. Each line, each addition, has a significance that must be treated with respect and cannot be done outside the ceremony. In this painting, the center circle represents the sun, the giver of life. This design is the feather pattern, signifying the sun's rays. In a circle around the feather pattern, rainbow designs are carefully traced, probably in acknowledgement of rain. Rainbow Girl and Rainbow Boy are holy people, and the rainbow is the conveyance of the holy people. It takes anywhere from two to four hours to complete a sand painting. Corn pollen, sacred in Navajo tradition, is sprinkled over the painting. A vital symbol of life, it represents guidance and control. In most Navajo rituals, healing is the principal objective. The sand painting is only part of the total ceremony. <laughs> According to legend, the sand painting must be destroyed before nightfall. Traditionally, the Navajo lives a life at peace with his environment. These traditions are the result of experience in the desert. We might say the Navajo culture helps the individual transcend the ordinary, everyday, petty experience and helps him gain meaning for life and perspective. Study of the Navajo might well raise important questions for us. Questions about our culture and how it provides meaning for our lives. Questions about change. Questions about the role of tradition in our lives. These are tough questions. Nevertheless, important ones for all of us.